traditional unceded lands of the Coast Salish peoples, which includes the territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil nations. We thank them for allowing us to be their guests. Uh, well, Winnipeg, you know, uh, it's such a long time ago, my God, but uh, it's always something that's still in you. You don't get rid of it. Like, you know? There you go. Um, I remember when I, uh, I think one of the first times I, I don't know, I used to watch a lot of TV. I was a mm -hmm. single kid in the beginning when I was, grew up in Winnipeg in a bad part of town, uh, Logan Avenue. And um, Logan, Avenue. Logan Avenue, you know, grew up with my dad and my uh, my mom and myself and uh, we lived uh, in like two rooms. Um, it was like a kitchen and also a living room, uh, dining room, bedroom, mm -hmm. and uh, above um, uh, above a motorcycle shop, you know, and with so the- it was nice and quiet. Oh yeah, it was doing, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And there was like, to, you know, like five other um, uh, apartments in the thing. And there was one bathroom, right? One uh, toilet and one, uh, uh, my God, place to have a nice bath, you know, and that was about it. So that's where I, I started out, um, you know, my life, I guess. And uh, I just remember watching a lot of TV, you know, really close uh, all the time. So I don't know, really <laughs> yeah, all yeah, the me time, too, right? Yeah, me too, yeah. you know. Yeah. And I remember, uh, you know, when they said to my mother, I, Mom, Mom, what, 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 what do you want? Like, nah, no, no. You know, Mama, I, I, can I, can I talk to you? Yeah, 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 sure, yeah, come. And uh, I think I, I want, I want to act. And she goes, what? Yeah, I want to, I want to be an actor. And she said, oh, well, you can't. <laughs> I said, well, why not? And she said, well, you don't look like Paul Newman. <laughs> no. <laughs> If I would have smart enough and lippy enough, I would have said, who the fuck is Paul Newman? But I didn't, you Never know. Never heard of him. I just sort of, you know, uh, that was sort of the beginning of my career and everything. But I, you know, I was like a, a loner kid. How old were you? Probably like? about like, you know, but maybe eight or nine or something really? at the beginning, you know. Really? I didn't even know who the fuck Paul Newman was. But, you know, I just thought it was sort of a, a neat sort of job or something, you know. Before that, I wanted to be a cartoonist, you know, but, uh, you know, it's, it changes all the time every five minutes when you're eight or nine. Yeah. But um, that's sort of, you know, it kind of gave me, a, put something in my mind, you know. So that's some, um, and uh, I did all the things you, you, you should do, like <laughs> quit school in grade 11. <laughs> Get out. Yeah, or, you know, and uh, I started off by playing in a, I quit really early. And nothing about acting. And then I, I, I got a job working at the Fort Gary Hotel. Uh -huh. uh, and it just uh, being a banquet houseman or something. And then um, it was there. Uh, I saw my life ahead of this. But this is going to be my life, you know. The, I was working for this older guy and this other guy who couldn't speak English. So, you know, and I remember one night, um, I, my job was sort of to set up for meetings, right? Uh -huh, yeah. There was bus by by some. I mean, sometimes you'd have to work like sixteen hours straight, and right. you'd have to. I remember him saying, "Okay, specifically, you can, you need a, you have a hundred fifty chairs to set up, right? And all the pens and pencils, and you must take is hundred fifty. So I remember doing it in this big room and everything. And it was impossible to do this, impossible, but in the way he wanted it. So I managed to sort of get really close to like about 145 people, and I was really pleased with that, right? Yeah, yeah. And then, wow, and it looks even better than he thought, you know? So then he comes in, right? I said, what did you do? What did you do? He said, 150, 150. You know, I told you 150. And I said, well, I can only fit 105 in. He said, you know, and I said, well, I quit. And he said, no, you can't quit. I, what do you mean <laughs> I can't quit? He says, because you're going to take over for me. And, you know, I taught you everything. And half the time I never saw him because in hotels, you always know these secret places you can go and hide to sleep. Yeah, yeah. And right. I never see him. He had a beeper right and come up, you know. And they say, do this, this, and you go, go away, you know. Yeah, yeah. And the other guy couldn't speak English, right? And I thought, is this what it's going to be all about? Right. Me right. setting up chairs right. for the right. rest of my life? <laughs> so I, I quit and I sort of met this other guy 
uh, there, and his brother um, had a band. And I was, um, I told myself playing guitar. That was the only thing probably that saved my life. When I was well, now, were you musical when you were a kid? Did you? Well, yeah. not really. And then, yeah. the, and but uh, there was a guy in school, and uh, he had played guitar, and uh, he'd write his own songs. And I noticed all the girls would like hanging around him, and I thought. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> jar girls. Hmm. Right. One plus one. So I started. I brought my own tune. I started writing my own song, and yeah. then he got st- he got really mad. And learned piano. <laughs> Didn't have a goddamn piano. Couldn't fit one in a goddamn place. So I just uh, started playing and just writing and just you know, doing all that stuff. You know, it was really good because you know, uh, in the sense of, you know. What do you do when you're young? You know, I mean, you hang around the Seven Eleven. You know, you yeah. Or you learn how to steal. You learn how to yeah. something. And Logan Avenue was a, a kind of a place that you know either you, you know, you never you, you quit school or you stayed in school and you got a job working at the, the ice factory or something or uh-huh. you, or or you ended up in jail or you something happened or you died. You know. Dad and mom, it was a crazy kind of marriage, you know. Mm-hmm. My mother was uh, 20 when she met my dad. Right. And then uh, they got married 21. The only problem is he was 58. Ah, uh-huh. right. Okay. So yeah. right from the start, there was a, a tendency to women's play. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, 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 this yeah. is not going to work out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it didn't really later on, you know. Um, and my mother ended up having a an affair that lasted about 40 years and all that and all this other stuff. Anyway, so I, yeah. I got away from that as soon as I can, you know. Now, uh, were you a good student or were you, did you hate the school and qu- just quit because you couldn't, no, you I, just felt stifled? N- not really, you know, um, I, I, I always, um, it just, there was just nothing there that I, yeah. I wanted to, um, the only good thing was I developed my sense of humor I never had a sense of humor. I was a fat kid with pimples. The kind of people they go, oh, okay, uh, oh, okay, I'll take Brazel. You know, and they're picking you know, chosen for, last, the last yeah, chosen yeah, yeah, guy. Yeah, you know, yeah, I was chosen last. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, the only history I ever had in the beginning yeah. was one day I was outside and I accidentally ran into the outdoor fountain, right? You know, and <laughs> right, uh, yeah. and from that day on, they removed the fountain outside, and everybody <laughs> was really pissed off at me. You know, <laughs> there's the guy who, oh, is he the Kid, where is he? I want to beat him up, you know? And uh, so that was my life in, in school. And um, I never was, I was just the kind of guy you don't remember, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then one day in school, um, I remember I was uh, I was a monitor, you know, so I was a hole. It was one of the suck holes, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Monitor. And um, I, uh, what, I was uh, the guy who was watering the plants up at the front of the class, right? And I remember I, um, I guess I got too close to one of the things. I remember putting the thing down, and, and one of the plants fell out the window, right? <laughs> and I looked, you know, and, I, and everybody's laughing, laughing, yeah, laughing, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, and I, yeah. they're laughing at me, yeah, right? Yeah. So I, um, you know, took out, I took up another plant, and I went out the window. Get out of here! <laughs> laugh, laugh, <laughs> laugh, laugh. <laughs> I teach you know what's going on, you know, and then I. <laughs> Just about to throw up the, the watering can. <laughs> it's a, what, are, what are you doing? Get it, you know. Go see the go see the principal. Uh, but there was something really interesting in that to me, you know. Just that yeah. I enjoyed yeah. that sort yeah. of kind of thing, you know. And that's I, I guess I guess it's the beginning. I found out I had a sense of humor somewhere. I was, you know. And then that from then on, it just um, it was always a, a thing that got me out of you know. Getting in trouble using yes. the sense. You know, he was yeah. the, I was never a fighter and never had same. Yeah. But you know, yeah. you know, don't beat up Brazil. He's really funny. You know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. let's go get after the Ukrainian guy. You yeah. know. So. <laughs> Started in grade seven, I think. My dad said one day, "So you're not going to that other school again?" You know. Mm-hmm. You're going to, you're going to Catholic school. What? I said, what? Oh, were we Catholic? <laughs> no, no. But you're going to Catholic school because you need religion or something, I guess. So I started going to a, a Catholic school, you know. And of course, first day, you know, I guess from the, I was in grade seven or something, and 
people say, oh, we have a new person in class, you know, um, and his name is Jay Brazo, and he's in our class, and, you know, and we thought that he would lead the prayers today, you know. <laughs> you know? No, I, I said, no. He was going to write prayers, you know. So, uh, Jay, why don't you start the prayers today, you know. And, uh, <laughs> Dear God, can I Oh, yeah, so I'm like this, you know, like, <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> Jesus sure. Christ. <laughs> yeah, right. And got through that, you know, and it was, you just thought I just was too shy to do it. But, you know, it was religion was one of the classes, and I, I didn't know anything about that, you know. I'd, I'd seen, I think, maybe Ten Commandments and that, you know. Yeah. And then that, that sort of started. And then so I went up to up to grade 11, and we were taught by nuns and everything. Oh, and yeah, right. I yeah. just sort of made it all the way up there. But school, you know, my relationships, my mom and dad was really bad, so. Uh, she kicked me out of school. No, I, I didn't class, but I kicked me out of the house when I was yeah. about 16 or 17. So I continued. I was on welfare and going to school at the same time right. kind of thing, you know. And right. It never worked out. And I just needed something else. Also, it was the 70s. Everybody was looking at yes. something else. You yes. know how it is. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, I remember so, well. Oh, yeah. yeah, we did yeah. that. So I quit. And I, I just had a... When I was 16, I just remember I, I had, uh, went out to um, Vancouver. I think we hitchhiked out there, and it was just an amazing experience. You You've know, ne you never, never been, been to Vancouver before. before. Yeah. It was fabulous. We're out here, and I think we stayed right by there. Was the where where the armory was? Um, can be down there. You know, where the mm -hmm. where the uh, the tank is outside. That's it was like a right. place they'd let you sleep there, right, for three or four days, no more than three or four, more four yeah. days. You know, and um, it used to be really great, and. Um, I remember hanging around here and I went back and then and then I had a fight on the way back with my friend and then I never saw him and then I found out later on he'd quit too at school, right? Right. So uh, we, had, we then we hitchhiked to uh, Toronto in the middle of the winter. Oh my God. <laughs> Smart idea. Yeah, yeah. And then um, I went back to grade 11 and I passed and it was at grade 12 and it was at the same thing again. It just it was just yeah. nothing for me so I quit yeah. and that's yeah. Um, yeah. going around how then I started, you know, been working for at the Fort Gary Hotel and that, and I just um, then I met up with another guy, and he needed somebody to play rhythm in his band, you know. Right. Get a band called the uh, Odd Couple. There were three of us. <laughs> Winnipeg sense of humor, <laughs> you know. And I started doing that, and that was great. It was fine. And then uh, after that, I I just thought I'd do and start writing some songs. So I started doing like folk clubs, you know, like a you. Uh, in my UW and, and places like that, you know, playing all those coffee shops, coffee shops, yeah, yeah, yeah. trying yeah. to write Leonard Cohen type songs. Sure, yeah, yeah. My name yeah, is yeah. Leonard Cohen. <laughs> I'm the right depressing songs. <laughs> oh, the sisters of people, you know, you know, and do that. Then, you know, playing. I remember playing places and, you know, people never listen anyway. I remember one play, the guy had no money, but he said, I'll give you free wine. And it was great, you know, but everybody was going out this going, it was that Manischewitz wine? It was the worst wine. The whole wine. thing, it was the That's, worst wine. <laughs> that was wine. No, so after that, it's no. And then um, somebody um, said they wanted the, to, to, he said they wanted to, they need somebody for a play. I don't know how, what happened. They needed somebody for a play. I think it was, yeah. Then I walked in, it's, I walked into this Manitou Potato workshop. Uh -huh. And I said, I, I, I want to be an actor. See, I, think, I want to be an actor. It's just, right. well. You just walked in. Said, yeah. yeah. You really want to be an actor? Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, here's this hammer and his nails. Go work on that set over there, right? Yeah. So that's yeah. what I did. I yeah. worked on sets and I took some classes at night. And then somebody was in the play and then somebody else played guitar, like I said. And, you know, and they said, uh, you know, well, I don't know if I want to do it. I don't play guitar. I said, well, we'll give you a, we'll give you a line in the, in the play yeah. then. Yeah. And they said, well, what is it? And they said, go fuck the cops. I said, I'll do it. <laughs> I'll do it. I'll do anything. I said here. it twice. Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> go and so that was that and i just started doing stuff there and then you start doing children's theater you know that's that. sort of what happened to oh, me I, I started out as a techie and i didn't oh, yeah. i didn't uh, and and it was because i was from had a southern accent oh perfect and, they and say was, you know and i was out at ubc i was oh, in gosh. the creative writing department oh yeah but oh, wow. they you know I was hanging around with people like Susie, and you what, know, I was hanging around with the you know theater department because it was so cool. Oh, I know. It was mo most. I love the lights. Yeah, I just love the atmosphere. You know, you're looking for a family. Yeah, yeah, exactly. For me, I feel like I've never yeah. had a family, and suddenly yeah. I met all these other crazy people who were just doing what they wanted to do, and I, um, 
just seemed like the thing to do, you know. Yeah. And it was learning and learning, you know, you know anything about acting or anything, but you just hang around and, you know, right away there's somebody an old pod guy part, right? Because I was bigger, so, you know, fatter, right? Hey, you can be uh, the father, right? Uh, here, take the shoe polish, you know, yeah. like that, right? In the yeah, old yeah, days yeah. and everything. Yeah. And then, you know, yeah. be, be old, you know? So it, Character that's right. Yeah. It was Character like, actor from the get-go. Exactly. Right. That's yeah. good. Yeah. I, you know, I'm thinking yeah. of in the beginning, I was thinking, oh, no, I want to do these other parts. But then uh, mm -mm. one day you, you realize... Thank God you don't look like Paul Newman. Oh, exactly. That is exactly... <laughs> Thank God, you know, because <laughs> you could have to be Paul Newman all the time. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. There's being a character, you could be anybody and, you know. Yeah. So th so that was in uh, Winnipeg. Yeah. In Manitoba. So you yeah. did start doing theater there yeah, yeah. more and more. I Just assume sometime that, you got into equity. Well, and, what happened was yeah. they, had the, they had the Manitoba Theater Center there. Yeah. And uh, they had guests coming in every once in a while. Yeah. And um, in the beginning, there were people like Ken Walsh. Who were coming in? They were doing. He was doing Juno and the Paycock, I think, and he he always wanted to do um, Under Milkwood, you know. I knew nothing about Under Milkwood, but he said Captain Cat, you can be Captain Cat, and they thinking, oh, what okay. a superhero! Great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no, it isn't any of them. But you know, he came, he directed it, and that was great. Yeah. Bernard Hopkins was there, and uh, doing some other play, I think Comedy Veras, and he wanted to direct something, and he said, um, doing Ben Summer Night's Dream, and he said, yeah. Bottom, yeah. Bottom the Weaver, so. So okay. you, I, I, I learned from these guys. Um, I knew nothing about theater, but um, coming up from a bad side of town, you have an intuition. Yeah. And I knew that you always have to trust your intuition because that'll always get you placed through doors and everything. And, to, you know, a lot of acting too, you know. So the other thing that happened was at that time, um, uh, I think, uh, what happened? happen? Yes, it was, um, of course, Lynn Carew. Oh, yeah. Famous right. Winnipeg actor. Yeah, yeah. Goes away, becomes very famous. Broadway wins. He's fantastic. He's coming back, right? Mm -hmm. So I end up in a kind of play called Visions of Lois Fort Gary. Originally, I was playing this character called Pierre Falcon, which was a, it was a, it was a Winnipeg sort of comedy mm -hmm. by David King. David King, who was a fabulous writer, is not with us anymore. Yeah, yeah. He's the yeah, funniest yeah. guy in the world. And he's Winnipegger, too. He's right? Winnipegger, too. Okay, and uh, he got me in that. this show, and uh, he wanted me to play Pierre Falcon. Oh, sure, sure. So there was another famous guy, Jimmy Mizon, yeah, who right. was at Shaw Festival, great, great actor, great director. And he um, was doing this other part, and then he got a gig. He was working as a caretaker, actually, at the Warehouse Theater. And then somebody somebody cast him to be in the lead in the play, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. It's funny, when he was doing the play, he would be doing it, and he'd still clean up at night after you. Right. And uh, so um, so that was it, called Visual for Gary. And then everybody had to drop up. So the, there was a part of the... The young, back then they would call him the young Indian, I think he was called, you know. I can't, you know, I can't say that because I'm indigenous too. That's another thing. I, that, right, yes. Whole other thing, yeah, right. Yes, we're getting into Yeah, that. I don't want to yeah, get yelled yeah, at. Yeah, no, no. Uh, yeah, but I, um, so I, I get play young Indian, you know. It yes. was such a funny role, you know. And uh, it was great. So there were a bunch of us, a bunch of local people in, in Winnipeg and the old thing, the show, it, David's uh, King show. Um, and uh, Lynn Carrier showed up one night. Mm hmm he saw the show and he cast the entire show in his first show at Manitoba Theater Center, which was uh, wow. Cyrano de Bergerac. Wow. Wow. And That's I fantastic. had been, I had three parts. Wow. I had I think I remember the lines already. Uh, I played uh, uh, the guy who lit the the lamp lighter was that right? And I have a he's being booted and hooted out of town, Montfleury. <laughs> then I was um the uh one of the pages who played guitar, uh, well, the, the uh, Roxanne ran away with um, the young Christian and got married. Okay. Right? And that, my line was, um, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and then the last was, old Bertrand Lou, the fife player. Oh, yeah. More great thing. That's okay. But I had my great line, oh, Chevron, it's <laughs> Was that when you put a man? But that was my three parts. Cool. And I got to see Lynn work, yeah, and I yeah, got to work with yeah. uh, Jean Gascon, yeah. a wonderful director, gave him my first great thing I ever learned, uh, you know, because I knew nothing of it, so I was scared shitless. And he said I was really uh, quiet, quiet, so when I started off, he says, no, 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 you could be, make it big, make it big. 
if you know you really so small like that, I think you're a shitty actor. Make it big. I know how you are. And I can take you down. You know, a wonderful person. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. and of course Lynn Carey, everybody. And uh, it was fantastic. I watched yeah. Lynn every night from the. I did a film with him. I oh, really you know him. exactly. Yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, he's really pretty fantastic. Oh, yeah, he's yeah, yeah, just yeah. great. And um, yeah. I said I watched. Got him to ride was... to work with him in the oh, car. Oh, did you? Yeah, <laughs> no. Yeah, he's was a really cool neat. guy. He's a cool yeah. guy from Winnipeg. Yeah. That yeah. I said, well, if he can do, maybe I can even come near. If I can just do these little parts, I was happy. Yeah. And then that year, he cast me in the Christmas Carol. Right, mm. and I, now nobody ever works in Winnipeg. Nobody gets parts at all, especially yeah. if you're from Winnipeg, at the Manitoba Theater because it's the Manitoba Theater Center back yeah. then. Yeah, it was yeah. all people coming from England and all that and everything. Yeah, you know, that's right. Yeah, playing three lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then on the last show, there was this Rob Bob Bilheimer who was a um, director there from New York who was working there. He cast me in a play called Creeps, which is David right. Freeman, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, Playing a, a guy, um, Michael, who was both mentally challenged. And also had cerebral palsy. Right. And I got, um, I learned so much. It was yeah. walking around. We had a great person, you know, she had cerebral palsy, was kind of our guide and everything. And I said, well, um, when, oh, I don't know what to, to do. What do you think I should do here? And yeah. he go, just watch what I do. Yeah. <laughs> you know, right. was, yeah, yeah. It was true. He was yeah. there for us all the time. And yeah. It was great. And it's, it was such a hard show, it's such a great show. Yeah. The yeah. play starts off in uh, a bathroom and uh i think uh i was the first guy to go in to go to the washroom and you know pretend that they'd come in michael what are you doing michael get away from there michael michael you know <laughs> pull, pull me away and they push me out and then it, it, uh, it continues it's about trying to break through from this thing because in the story it says these guys spend their, their whole day sorting nuts and bolts that's what they are back then that's right. what they did. Anybody was mentally challenged or anything. They just put them back, back on their side and we'll give them a little job and they should be happy, right? Yeah, yeah. This guy, Bob Bilheimer, fantastic director, fantastic idea. Mm -hmm. What he does, he says, well, we'll open the doors a half hour before. We're setting up the factory in the back of the set. Where people can see. Right. And you guys are going to improvise. You're just going to be there all the time. Sure. The things, right? Sure, sure. So, yeah. and, they do, yeah. and he says, you know, it's a talk, talk, and I have this a bit, right? Mm -hmm. So when you start, when you start to listen, they start to hear things. They'll already be prepared to hear the open eyes and hear. Yeah. Fantastic idea, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, really good. Oh yeah, and it's um, it was meant so much to me, and also I get to do my first nude scene, which I had to go to the bathroom, and uh, I would always they would always talk about I had a my space gun. They would call my my penis my space gun. And uh, the, one of the nurse comes in, that, 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 you know, crabby nurse, kind of ratchety type. And uh, I'm ha going to the bathroom and she says, um, oh, everybody get out of here. Go back to work, go back to work. And somebody says, Michael, Michael, your ray gun. You know, you got you to gotta kill her with your ray gun. And I turn around with my penis and go chasing her around the stage. And uh, of course, you know. I was really worried, you know, like, <laughs> yes, people, you know, course. really yeah. worried. Yeah. Not, well, I wasn't worried about, uh, you know, drawing in the first place, but I was really worried that I'd get an erection. Oh, right? yeah. Okay. I would turn around again and I would be most embarrassed. Little did I realize <laughs> there, I'm up there, I'm just new, it's coming up and I'm going there to check and I go, you can't find it. <laughs> You know, it goes the other way. It's like being in cold water, it's right? It's a direction. So I'm yeah. going like this. I think, oh, like he must be method. He's doing something in there, right? So I go around and I start chasing, you know. And uh, that was my first uh, new gig and my first uh, great part. Of, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, and it yeah. Was, uh, I yeah. learned so much. Elizabeth Taylor was doing a little night music in the movie version. Mm -hmm. So finally, uh, Sondheim persuaded them to hire Len. Mm -hmm. So Len, but Len had to go early, right? He had to right. leave early. It means he wasn't able to be there after, you know. Mm -hmm. So he did one ear and it was fantastic. It was just a fantastic ear. The most exciting thing. He hired people from Winnipeg and it was exciting people. It was it was excellent. Next year, somebody else comes in. Back to the way Back, back, to, to, the way the, to, back yeah, to yeah. flying people. Yeah, from back to, exactly. All you know, over, yeah. everywhere else. Yeah. yeah. In, in, in. Started our own group called this Confidential Exchange with David King, local people, and we just did our own shows. Right. And we did our own reviews uh, right. and everything, and the, they were doing really good. We had a bit of a following, and eventually we ended up getting hired uh, by CBC to do a replacement show for the summer. It's called the Eddie DeVega Show, and David King has such a funny idea. 
he had this idea for a show before and having a group of players just like Saturday Night, Saturday Night Live before Saturday Night Live. Yes, yes, yes. And he had um, he would come on as Eddie DeVega, this kind of flashy kind of guy. Yeah. Uh, the man of the half hour, they called him, right? <laughs> and he go over to, he kept on going over to the talk to the the band, and he go was there, you know, they've been drinking, right? Yeah. And so uh, he'd have these performers, you know, a, a la Vegas size, but he'd have all these guys doing sketches in between. Sure. So uh, yeah. we did this, and it was a fabulous experience. Then we got nominated for an act or something, uh, but um, <laughs> they canned it after one thing. And then Saturday Night Live, and then uh, then set, um, SF, uh, you know, what, what are the other guys? Second City. Second City came after yeah. that, right? Yeah, yeah. But it was a great place, and it was, you know, yeah. learned to work on TV. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So people just started doing their own stuff. So in when Winnipeg. you were doing that, what, it was so so that was TV. Yeah. It, would they have like multiple cameras? Yes, kinda, yeah, kind of, right. yeah, it kind of thing. Exactly. Like a floor cameras. That's exactly what they around. did. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, it was fabulous. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. I did it, one show once. Jeez, oh, what the heck was the name of the show? It was called Flappers. It was in oh, Toronto. Did flappers. you ever do one? Yes, I remember Flappers. And they had like several cameras and a half French, half Anglo cast, oh, oh right? My God. If you remember, right? <laughs> oh my God. And uh, and they didn't have the money to mix it, so you had to. Everybody had to know where the cameras were going to go. Oh my God! And the, so the camera guys had to know the play. Totally All opposite. the actors uh, had to know where the where the where the uh, cameras were going to be. Yeah, yeah. You know, to to do like oh, the, yeah, exactly. the camera was going to be over there. And it was really, really um, difficult. Oh my you God! You know, it was Impossible. really difficult. And and I guess they used to all do like that before they learn to mix up mix you know, on the fly yeah. right i mean you know where they yeah. had you know multiple feeds into the but you know it was one of those things where the director was up in this room oh, exactly up the, the, uh, steve could you make sure you move to the left when you say that I line? Know. oh my god yeah. that's impossible yeah it was crazy it was they just, just crazy. started i remember here they started doing it they, but they hired uh, those guys to do hockey right oh yeah because they, they knew right away yeah, yeah. <laughs> they got they, they yeah. could do everything you know yeah. they were great yeah, you know? that's yeah. great that's the kind of person you need you know? exactly yeah. you know yeah. but we tried we didn't it wasn't really a lot of there was maybe one that was flappers is the only one i can safely say that's the know? only one i ever have ever done oh, and my God. i don't you know i can see well, why the first time i saw you yeah before i knew you was in funeral home Oh my God! I saw oh it because <laughs> I say this because <laughs> I, I only say this because and Alfie Alfie's not here anymore, and I say this because yeah. in Winnipeg, you never saw any Canadian films yeah. except yeah. you know they dumped them all at Christmas just before right. the big movies would come out, yeah, yeah, and that's yeah. when they show Canadian films. Right. That's when I got to see the stuff that was being shot here with the. Yeah. Oh, John Lazarus, the Skip Tracer, Skip and, Tracer, and yeah. that, yeah, and yeah. other stuff that was out here. I remember it's going. Oh, yeah. Yeah. it was it was great, and I'd get to know other people, other faces, you know. Wow, and other, wow. you did a good job, <laughs> my friend. Thank you, thank you. You know, home. That was that. so weird. Cries in the night was the first title. Of oh, it. <laughs> cries in the night. <laughs> And uh, yeah, they just did with Canadian films, so three really or four something. different titles all the time later on, right? You know, yeah, it's you know, that's a, that movie. Did you ever run into Leslie, Leslie uh, Donaldson, the girl? No, the, she was the oh girl. my god, Leslie Donaldson, yes, yeah, yeah, yes. Well, she's that that film is a huge cult film in yeah. uh, it's all through South America. We'll see. I mean, really, they they have festivals and stuff, and she flies down there. And, You're kidding? Yeah, no, no, no. It's she's big. It's she's incredible. like uh, Barbara Steele or one of those people. You know, like oh uh, wow, know, Barbara Steele, you know, of course, yeah, yes. You know, she's just like whoa. You know. Wow. Funeral, funeral. And you're there. Funeral. I'm there. Phoebe I mean, Miller. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> That's the oh, thing a about movie. films, right? What a movie. They, you do all these great, what, the great films and everything. Yeah. And then one night you come home drunk, and at two in the morning you turn it on, and you say, "I know this. Why do I know this?" And then you come up Who's and you go, Jimmy? "Oh, <laughs> I stink. Oh my God." <laughs> but yet. Those are the ones that give you residuals. Yeah, yeah. Kids movies. And somebody and might be remaking Skip Tracer. Oh, I hope maybe, so. Maybe, maybe. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God. I, I don't know very much about it. You got to bring I, John yeah. back in, just yeah. put him in or somewhere, you know, yeah. picture of David Peterson. Because that was a fantastic yeah. movie, yeah. I remember, yeah. in the beginning. Yeah, yeah Zale Dallin. Yeah. All those yeah, films. Yeah. The movies that I liked, because I was so depressed about their Canadian oh, wow. film scene. 
the night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where all the Australians, when all the Australian oh, movies my God. came out. You know, Breaker Morant oh, and my brilliant career, brilliant and stuff, Picnic brilliant. and Hanging Rock, and all that. All and guys. I just thought, oh my God, I have to, I have to be part of that. And I oh. developed this plan to go down there and apprentice. Oh, I you know, my God, and stuff like so that. I, I needed to raise some money, okay, you know, to yeah. do it, and you know, get Susie to come down with me, maybe, hopefully. Oh, you know, you know I was in Melbourne, yeah, yeah. and they have oh. a, a museum of yeah. film, Australian film. Yeah. And I went all these films that just yeah. well, wow. Just yeah. hit you, you know. I was lucky. I worked with, um, uh, I think George Miller, not the George Miller of uh, M- Mad. This other George Miller's Australian, uh-huh. and Bruce Beresford. Uh, you know. Oh, I love him. Oh, he was fantastic. Yeah, I auditioned for him. Oh, we must he, have been the same yeah. movie. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but didn't get it. Oh, I know. You know? I know. But he was a guy I wanted to apprentice with. Oh, I know. He's you know, most fabulous. of the times I got gigs yeah. were from people. Maybe it's through YouTube. Yeah. Uh, or English, you know, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Neil Jordan, people like that. Yeah. They're not really from America. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know. You had that yeah. experience, that great experience. Both of you. My God, with... with, with Costa Gavras. Costa Gavras. Oh, know, my God. I know. I know. I remember we had a bomb threat. We had... A, a, I think this is really early on. We, because uh, of the cause, material. Because of the material. Oh, yeah. uh, the movie was Betrayed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, There's a movie about the Aryan nations and yeah. stuff. What? Deborah and, Winger. And, and, uh, yeah. uh, and, and we were there, I think it was maybe the second or third day, and somebody phoned up and said, there's a bomb in one of the generators. Oh, my God. And the generator company had three generators out on, yeah. on shoots. Oh, so okay. they had to go, the RCMP had to go Everyone to each and, oh one and kind of send a bomb crew around. And so we just sat around talking. <laughs> so I was talking with John Mahoney and stuff. Just oh, talking. John Mahoney so, yeah, was yeah, in it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, it was really nice. Wow. And the nice thing was they did really, the, the, the Costa Gavis wanted to have an ensemble. Yeah, yeah. That was, you know, that's the way he... He, he liked that ensemble, that community thing. Yeah. But the uh, unfortunately, the uh, people at MGM, I guess it was, be- began to cut the ensemble out. They didn't fire anybody. Yeah, no, but they, but just, they, cut they them just began to you keep know, the, the camera, camera on camera, the money. Camera, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. You know. That happens to so many yeah. of these films. Thank God yeah, they still, yeah. now you can see them. Yeah. The original how it was supposed to be done, yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. That was a cool, cool thing to be on. Oh that was really nice. We were on it for a long time. We were on it for you like know. six weeks or something. You know, it's great to make a film. It's great to be in a good part in a film. But I tell you, the best yeah. thing of all yeah. is, like you said, yeah. sitting around and talking to yeah. these guys yeah, yeah, between yeah. takes. Yeah. I had I a wonderful time with Martin Landau once. Yeah, yeah. Just, you know. Were you, on, you were on uh, Intersection. Inter- right? I think I was doing Cyrano that time. Yes, I was right. At one time. Right. Right. And I got called, I said, we need you to come. come. So I got like I was able to get off. Cut to the set. You need to come to the set because uh, they were, Sharon Stone was supposed to do a nude scene today, but she's got a headache. <laughs> she, so he said, you got to come and do the scene with, and I think it was on top of a building or something, Kevin McNulty. And, right. And, uh, and uh, it was, uh, I tell you, the interesting thing about that is, you know, I'm a kind of straight guy, but I tell you, Richard Gere uh-huh. is so beautiful yeah 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 in he, sex yeah yeah yeah, yeah. looking yeah, at him yeah. i couldn't believe it when i look at him he is a yeah, cool, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah always has been yes yeah and look at the, the who was the vimos was that the the dop was it somebody Zygmunt? like that or Vimo Zygmunt. yeah yeah i was there i think so yeah and the director yeah well, uh, 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 Rydell, uh, right, Mark Rydell. Yeah, yeah. Uh, talk about yeah, Hollywood yeah, yeah. being surrounded by Hollywood. No, it was real, real Hollywood. No, Very nice. Yeah. Sure. Well, I came here because I'd gone to Toronto, and that didn't work out well. You know, I think it was the height of, or no, there was all those films going on, right? And I, I said, you know, well, and the film the yeah, thing, and I went to go to try to make it there in Toronto because yeah. I couldn't make it in Winnipeg. Yeah. And they said, well, you you need a an agent, right? They got yeah. an agent, but no, yeah, but, yeah. But, but in order to get an agent, uh, it was like you had to, in order to you need in order to get the film, you need an agent. But in order to get an agent, you had to have done film. Yeah. Right. So it was that kind yeah. of thing. So yeah. I, yeah. I just going went up there. I didn't do much at all. I ended up going back. Know, my tail between my legs and uh, and I was with this girl at the time and it was great so we decided we'd go and things were on the we go and try again in Vancouver right uh-huh. so I moved her uh, down with uh, two other friends to um, Vancouver and I came back to finish off with doing Guys and Dolls got there right. she uh-huh. was at the apartment and everything it was great 
I come back and she's fallen in love with the caretaker of the block. You know. Damn. So, Damn. no place to she, live. She should go away. No, there, okay, there we go. Go away. <laughs> there. I mean, I'm standing under an awning because, uh, you know, I refuse to buy an umbrella because who, who's, you know, who's young and know, buys yeah. an umbrella? Nobody Little did I know yeah, I was yeah. going to be there for three days, yeah. you know, and I was there and I, I, you know, I finally got an agent and all that stuff. And I just sort of started over here. You've done so much stuff and you've been in some pretty big theater productions, oh, yeah. you know. And have you ever thought about, could you leave? Do you, you go to the States or L.A. or any of that kind I, of stuff? I think that was the, well, see, that's the thing, right? I mean, here's what you have. Um, theater has always been such a part of my life. You know, when I got here, I couldn't get anything. So I ended up hanging around um, theater sports. I ended up just yes, you know, doing right. theater sports yeah, all yeah. the time. And that's where I met other people. And that's how I started doing theater and go around. When you start doing film and there's two ways you do film. You do film to be a, you're trying to be a better actor mm -hmm. or you're trying to be a star, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, people who look like me aren't the stars, right? Yeah. Those are the guys who go to... That's Paul Newman. Uh, is that Paul Newman again? <laughs> that fucking Paul Newman. You know, they, and uh, so I thought I was here and I thought, well, I'm not going to go unless I have something really big or something take, will take me there. Because yeah. that's a whole other yeah. thing. Yeah. And I'm pretty gone. I mean, I had Word of Angels, I had a big part in all that. But I just didn't do it, you know. I remember it's a whole other kind of thing. Yeah. You make a lot more money, but then you a lot of more money is going out. You're paying Canadian agent or American agent. Uh, you're paying a publicist, publicist a manager, everything, a lawyer, everything. By the time you go, you, you only got yeah. nothing anyways, right? Yeah, yeah. And you've got to be in L.A. You've got to be in, in America. And it's, yeah. uh, America, the great things are about America, but it's yeah. um, there's a freedom involved in here. I could just still be here. Yeah. Nobody knows who you are. Nobody bugs you, like I said, and you just yeah. you just get to do the work, and you can do plays too at the same time, back and forth. Yes. Right. If you're in LA, it's you're all doing, you know. Yeah. You're doing movies, right? Yeah. 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 Movies and TV. And I think you become a different kind of person. I know people go there and they just gotta, I 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 gotta get, I gotta, you know, you know. And yeah. I think I was hap quite happy with what I was doing, and I was prepared to just stay here and. Yeah. All of a sudden, I have kids, and I didn't want to take my kids down there. And yeah, yeah. The whole yeah. Thing, you know, so you just, I thought, yeah, yeah this, is, this is very similar to Bill Dow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was the same, same, same yeah. sort of uh, life path, yeah. you know. Yeah, for sure. I know people were coming up here anyway. You get yeah. to work with great people and stuff like that. Anyway, yeah, it's interesting. Know. Yeah. Well, you're doing stuff at Presentation House, too. Like, you're like, it's kind of producing and well, writing. Just trying to do different things. Yeah, I think yeah. um, it sort of started because when I got older, um, just I've always wanted to write, but I remember being David, uh, and David was so good. I thought I could never be as good as that. I'm not going to write, you know. I've been in some kind of co-ops where I wrote little things together, but um, mm -hmm. when he passed away, I started, uh, near the end, I, I started writing, could, and, you know, because I learned so much from him. Um, yeah. And I wrote a first play, and, you know, he was there, and, and he really li liked it. So it's really good. It's like, let me carry you again, you know. It was uh, because I needed to... I need not to show the kind of parts I get a lot were a kind of like I said, lawyers, doctors, white collar crime, stuff like that. Yeah. You can do that for the rest of it. You can do those things. Oh, yes. But you don't get anything sheriff. from it. Sheriff, <laughs> sheriff, guys. You don't get a, a lot Cop. from it. You know, yeah. you're not yeah. the guy, you know. Yeah. You know, the guy explains why the you know the UFOs only land in don't in, <laughs> in Burns Creek or wherever it is, you know. And uh so I just got tired of doing these kinds of things, and then also I'm getting older, and there's no parts either. Yeah. How many people my age, you know, there was, who was there's who, one old person in every oh. show. So I thought, you know, I'll just ease out, and I was never been able because of my history of life and family and things. I've never been able to face certain things. I thought I had it licked when I moved here, and everything, and then, um, you know, my. I, uh, my whole life was your father's gonna die. Your father's gonna die. Your father's gonna die soon, right? Because uh -huh. he was older than my mother. My mother would say it all the time. And my mother ended up dying at 51. Uh -huh. My dad lived till 96. You know, and uh, all these problems uh, that I was thinking that, that I, I just put them to the side. Uh, so I started to just think of those things that I wanted mm -hmm. to write about. Face. Uh huh. You know. Uh, you know, you want to do different things. You want to travel. I want to go to the Camino Trail. I want oh, to yeah. just go walk right, right. on the ground yeah. for right. for how many thousands of yeah. miles? I don't know for, for yeah, yeah. six months. Yeah, because you can because um, 
things become different when you get older. There's different things. You know? The idea of standing up in front of people, yeah. you know, a, 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 to do anything, oh, to, yeah. to say, uh, we'll take a break now. Just even that oh, was, yeah. oh, yeah. was, was terrifying to me. Oh, and, no. and, 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 you know, and, and, like you're talking about your first nude scene, oh, you yeah. know, well, after you kind of get over that, they yeah, get yeah, easier, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and and the uh, and so I really like that, and it, it sort of helped me yeah. build myself into who I I guess I wanted to be, and now that's done. Yeah, you know, it's that's yeah. sort of done, and yes. there's yeah. things that I want to do, but. And, and acting might be kind of involved in yeah, it, yeah. but it's more. I'm, I'm, I think I'm turning into more of a producer type, producer creative, type, but also you're such a, a writer creative. too. I like and writing. The, I really like writing. Yeah. The thing that happens yeah, with yeah, your writing is, yeah. see, when you're still doing those things, it's great. You're playing a part. You're doing that. You're doing great. You win Oscars. Whatever you do, but yeah. it's the lines that you were saying yeah. is somebody else, right? Yeah. So when you, but you, when you're writing. It's yeah. you. You can just be yeah. sitting down. You can people read your book or you, yeah, yeah, yeah. they watch your play, and yeah. Yeah. you can just you know yeah. create in that way. And that's yeah. a, that's a, a wonderful yeah. way. To, it's hard to write. My God, it's a lonely kind of existence. At least when you're together in something, you know. Mm -hmm. But it shows you can actually do it because you mm -hmm. did mm -hmm. actually get something, and you're able to do it. That's a major thing in the first place. Is writing is one of the most important things that a person can do in their life, mm -hmm. you know. And I think anybody can do it, you know. Especially actors and stuff like that, you know, that's, and it gives you something because you're creating something, right? Even if you're only the person who sees it, you're still creating, you know. Are you? What are you doing now? What's next for you? Are you aside from next for me? Um, yeah. Well, I I sort of gave up the film thing for a bit, and then so I was suddenly I got like two hallmarks back to back and a zombie series. So then, uh, then it then it been quiet again, and I was doing some uh, voiceover stuff, you know playing some wizards <laughs> and um, I just finished them or I'm doing one right now kind of another movie it was great because these are things that just people offered me so it was great yeah, so yeah, I'll, go, yeah. I'll go anywhere I don't care what the script is <laughs> you know it's nice when that happens right <laughs> yeah right yeah and so um, yeah that, I, I'm so nice not to have to audition oh yeah yeah, I know. yeah. so I'm doing that and then finishing that and then um, I'm helping Suzanne out with her play I wrote some uh, songs for her uh -huh, for her play uh -huh, uh -huh. And um, and she's going back to the rehearsal with the, doing a little kind of thing, um, showing of uh, a couple of days of the work where they've done so far, right? And, um, at presentation house, and then um, I'm just thinking, I was really worried about doing this play. I did a couple of Zoom things um, on mm -hmm. this play. It's a new play by a French uh, playwright, um, uh -huh. and it's a translation, and it's great because we did a couple of workshops of it, uh -huh. and. Um, he was there the whole time we did the Zoom right because it was in French it would be the first English version of it and things I don't, I don't ever thought of before just like one word can mean something so different right? yes and not be yes yes and he was there all the time and he spent so much time doing that making sure that it was exactly what he wanted right it was fabulous right and it's um, a wonderful play called uh, The Ballad of Georges Bovin and I'm going to be doing that I think uh I wasn't sure about it because suddenly they said, well, we're doing it in two weeks. What? Wow. So I said, like, you know, I can't do this, you know. It's supposed to be kind of a project, too, for um, for for older people, too, you know. And I've said, you know, guys, I can't memorize, you know, play all these different characters, you know, in two weeks or, you know, but, uh, no, there's no time You for mean me. they just wanted two yeah, weeks rehearsal? Yeah, two weeks. No, it's like, it's going to be maybe four or five weeks. But at this point in my life, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just memorize my lines. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, um. So um, I said, if you let me do a script or we'll work something out. Yeah. And I said, you know, because it's the purpose of you want older people too. you know, put them up on stage. I've seen people with just a whole things doing a whole play just with their scripts in their hand. After sure. Two, two, sure. You know, sure. a couple, two pages. Sure. You don't see the papers anymore, right? No, no, no. You're you, here, no, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. And that's, I said, that's stage what Stage readings do. are just totally yeah, yeah, fine. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's fine. So doing that and that. Because it's a beautiful um, play. Yeah. This is this is actors mm. doing what they do best. Yeah, eat. Mm, <laughs> nah, nah. Jeez. Mm. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah.
if you weren't doing what you're doing, what would you do? That's interesting, eh? Yeah, I don't know. I yeah. don't know. But like anything to do, and then you, something totally than acting, right? Something yeah. totally different. Yeah. I used to love, you know, but I'm too late in it now. Mm -hmm. But I used to love just going around to uh, thrift shops, <laughs> mm -hmm. looking for interesting things, you know, mm -hmm. antiques and stuff like uh -huh. that and stuff. But you know, I used to collect Maxwell Parish prints. Wow, that was my yeah. one thing. You know, the hardest thing for an actor to find is a job. The second thing yeah. is a hobby. Yeah, You're right. You know, something like that. I think you know. I don't know what I do. My God. Yeah, I know. You got, you got to do something. I remember Robert Clothier said to me. Oh my God! Of course, he had to do. He said you got to do something. Uh huh. Uh huh. And he was he was his was sculpture. Oh God! Yeah, you know, and. Uh, you know, you just, you, you can't, can't, mm. you have to have something. Yeah. You have mm. to have some. The thing. other thing. This all started because Susie told me I needed a hobby. Because I was always glued oh. to the computer writing. Oh, yeah. Well, well mm. now I'm glued, glued <laughs> to the computer editing. But now right? you're together doing it. This yeah, is great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think something yeah. like, I wish I could do it <laughs> if I had money. Like, even if they have a bookstore or something like that. People come in, you could talk, friends or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That kind of thing, yeah. you know. Well, they're they're great kids. You like your guys, you know. That's the thing that we have are so lucky with is that when they were really young, they met so many crazy people, so many different people, gay people, not gay people, crazy people, revolutionists, whatever thing. Somebody new coming in, so they're exposed to the whole other side of life, mm -hmm. rather than being, you know, the kind of you got to cut your hair, you got to, you know, get a job, you got to get married, <laughs> right? You know. Right. Yeah. Gotta buy Bitcoin, you know. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. But so, um, <coughs> the only thing I was really, uh, we were pretty good about school. Then one time, we were halfway through school, there were things were going so well, so you just pulled them out. It's that, it's that kind of kind of weird kind of school where you don't have to do anything. Yeah. Yeah, you know, called Windsor House. It was great. Yeah, yeah, it was great. It was lovely, fantastic time. They learned so much, and. Uh, and they learned to talk to they learned to talk to people like you know yeah. to older people. And because I knew, didn't go up in a great kind of surrounding, I my music is a thing I had, and I could bang out songs about how I hate or whatever the world on my guitar, right? So I said, you don't have to do anything else, but you're going to have to take piano for, for you know, eight or ten years. Mm -hmm. And they did that. They did that, right? And they did they they liked it because I found a really good teacher, and the teacher would say, uh, okay, what, what do you want to play? Uh, theme from Simpsons. Okay, we're going to learn that. John yeah. was yeah, 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 yeah. they, they, they did, you know, incredible. Same with Max. And Max was taking. Um, I made him take clarinet in school because he had uh, asthma a bit, right? Uh huh. So a wind instrument. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that I said, well, this will make me think he's trained. And really, he's a lot better now, you know. So now um, Max wanted to be a kind of pianist for a while. So he decided he wanted to be an electrician. So well, cool. Why not? You can be an electrician. You can do anything you want. Mm -hmm. You almost have a job. So he was doing that, and of course the pandemic went uh, haywire. So um, so he uh, goes to school, and he goes to work, right? And then you go back go to school and everything, so he's come back to work. And he's also uh, playing in a band, right? So he's playing cool. in a band and cool. also does um, cool. DJing. John has always been this guy, John, you know. He always won, I mean, he told me he broke the bank. He had this thing once, you know, when iPhones first came out, right? Yeah. He said, I, iPhones, and I said, oh, thank God, you don't have them in Canada yet. He says, and, and uh, he comes in one day, it just shows up, of course, it shows up. He's bought an iPhone from the, on the online. Oh, damn, John, I'm really pissed off because you spend all your money, all you have on iPhones. You don't even work up here in Canada. How can you even use this thing? Oh, my God, you know. So, I'm, you know, so I go near the thing, and then I'm at my other phone, my other smartphone, my other Android, whatever they call Android. So I get a phone ring, and uh, I pick it up, and he goes, hi, what? Who is this? And he says, John. John, where are you? I'm in my bedroom. <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, I'm on my iPhone, you know. So after that, I knew John, you know, he got a part time job working at Apple. He, he just knows computers, like, you know. Oh, great. Okay. We only had two kids. First one was to learn how to use a VCR, the second one, the computer, you know, <laughs> because it's, uh, you know, I'm, thank God that we have them in our life. Yeah. And he's always been doing that. And, you know, he got his dream job. 
uh, building um, synthesizers. Oh, great. So he does that, great. and he does electronic music. I, I don't know what it is. It goes to uh, SFU, I call it Science Fiction University. Uh -huh. And um, he goes there, and he's doing um, stunning music, right? Oh. I told both my kids, fuck around till you're 30, do whatever you want. Then yeah. maybe start thinking about, you know, because life is short and, you know, don't worry about stuff. Life you is must, shorter than you think. You think yeah. yeah, so yeah, have yeah. some fun, you know. They're both great boys. They're they're wonderful, but, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's hard as we we love them and then, you know. Yeah. And of course, you know, love's a different kind of thing, you know. Every five minutes, you know, I was always waiting. Especially when I've been really younger. I remember yeah. going in like this every five minutes when my son wasn't sleeping and I go like this. Yeah, just yeah. Just to make sure oh, he's yeah. up. Like, okay, know, you know. I know, I know. And of course, I didn't realize uh, that the noisiest son of a bitch is at night, you can't even sleep. You know, <laughs> next to you, in the, you know. But I love them, and that's great. And I'm so, that's one of the things I'm most proud of. And I bet yeah. you guys are too. It's just, yeah. you know, I, I look at them, and I can see myself growing up again. Yeah. You know, yeah, and it's yeah, so yeah, beautiful. Yeah. And things start to come back, or you know, and, and it, it's it's great. And that's the, I think, my greatest achievement. You know, it, I think I can always say that I put two people, really cool people into the world. You know. Because we our age, we have all fucked up the world as it is, you know. <laughs> so we have to try to, you know, I hope things, you know, I, things will, you know. I think they will, whatever way, you know. They're smart kids, you know. They all got iPhones. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> you know? 